Thank you, Mr. Cowden, and uh, thank you to the Sioux Community Development Association for sponsoring this evening. And uh, I've appreciated the opportunity of serving our community over the past three years. I hope that isn't two minutes. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Okay. And uh, to all candidates for allowing their name to uh, stand for public office. There are a number of issues uh, facing our community in the coming years. And uh, one of them, I believe, is our growing population, the density that we're facing, the inevitable growth that we're facing, and uh, how we're going to cope with that growing population and uh, to build that around our official community plan, which was approved last year. Jobs and the economy are important. I will continue to work for uh, more jobs to become available to Souk people, so that we have more people living and working here in Souk. The transportation network, yes, it would be lovely to have a four-lane highway all the way to Souk, but to be realistic, I would work with the MOT and other levels of government to try and make some of the curves on Highway 14 safer, to ensure that there are cycling shoulders all the way to suit. <coughs> I would work hard to make sure that the ENN line is restored to service, so that more can, commuters can be taken from the West Shore into Victoria, and three or four trains running in the morning, three or four trains running in the afternoon to relieve some of the congestion. I would continue to work on having our connector road put in to have some of the pressure taken off of Highway 14 that runs through our downtown area. And I would also work very hard to have a more user-friendly schedule for transit. When members, when clients for the crisis center have to go into Victoria to cast their check, it's basically a five-hour return trip by transit. That is not reasonable. I would continue to support our town center plan which is going to be the heart of our community in the coming years. With regard to taxation, I am a taxpayer like everybody else in this room. I would be a hardworking steward of our funds. It is easy to campaign on lowering taxes, but I would think you would find there isn't very much to lower, there isn't much in the way of fluff at District Hall. The Occupy Wall Street movement, sorry? Thank you. There's an important aspect. I would also focus on housing options, on community safety, and I am a man of action. The candidate that you see on my platform is the candidate that you see here. And I look forward to serving our community for a further three years in the capacity of mayor. Thank you. has been suggested by a number of the candidates. The uh, town has made tremendous progress in the past three years, and uh, people have acknowledged to me the progress they have seen in the town, and the fact that there are a number of local people working on some of these bigger projects. And uh, I would work with staff and with council, and with the various committees that support council and staff in their work to look at the long term, and to continue working with some of these projects to see them through and hopefully attract other projects and to focus as well on our, on our eco and cultural tourism, again, to build up more employment in our town. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if that question actually came from the Municipal Auditor General's office. Um, we were told at UBCM that the um, provincial government will be bringing in a Municipal Auditor General, and that will allow for exactly the kind of thing that you are asking for, if it is deemed necessary. Um, I have full confidence in our staff. I am a taxpayer in this town as well. The budget process is open to the public. The public is welcome to attend those meetings in the chamber, and they are welcome to ask questions of staff. The staff are always available. The telephone number is known. The district website is known. People can ask questions. They can get answers. Fifteen communities across British Columbia have been compared, and of those 15, we are one of them. Our residential tax rate in 2010 was the second lowest. Our business tax rate in those 15 communities was the third lowest. I am a taxpayer in this community. I will be a steward of those public funds on your behalf. The district 
district has a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Transport, and so we're very fortunate to be able to work with them. And uh, there is regular consultation with the Ministry staff and our district staff. Um, we had the opportunity, as Mr. Mill mentioned, to beautify our downtown area um, a few years back, and that referendum was defeated through the AAP process, so we had to give a check back to the Ministry. Um, to relieve congestion in the downtown area, as mentioned, uh, with a provincial highway running through the downtown is a long and, and uh, difficult process, but we continue to work with MOT on that. And with the connector road, a priority of council, and hopefully with the next council, um, progress would be seen, hopefully by the end of this year, early spring, on that connector road start. Thank you. I would continue to focus on eco and cultural tourism as uh, one of the key industries that we can attract to this town and build on in this town. We already have a tremendous uh, number of businesses that focus on that. Um, there is increased effort to promote the Pacific Marine Circle Route, which draws people from around the world and again focusing on our hospitality industry. Um, the uh, Subaru Triathlon was brought to uh, Souk a number of years ago and was on TSN. And again, that has gone worldwide. Um, I would hope that we could also um, attract industries such as the one in the uh, Kaltasen uh, workyard area, the um, HBM Industries, which is making uh, solar lights and so on that are being used around the world. Um, so light industry, technic industry, assembly industry, um, that can be a home-based or a small uh, light industry um, process. I'm not sure I'm speaking on Mr. Martin's behalf. <laughs> uh, as you are probably very well aware, the um, Sioux Fire Rescue Service has salary staff members as well as a volunteer fire department. And part of that tax increase would be going toward um, paying for those salaries so that we have a guaranteed call out of at least two members for each fire call out um, 24 hours a day. And it also has gone towards the long term financing of equipment acquisition. I did a lot of research into smart meters and I received a number of uh, very um, personal emails from a number of Sioux uh, residents and I communicated back to them. Uh, when I was at UBCM I listened to all of the de deliberations um, on the smart meter issue and uh, I was part of a vote that very narrowly requested that uh, BC Hydro, the Utilities Commission, the various ministers responsible for the different areas, um, have a moratorium on smart meters until adequate research, third party you know, research, whatever, um, can be carried out. Shortly after that moratorium vote was announced, um, Minister Coleman said, well, that's too bad. We're going ahead anyway. So I was prepared to have a moratorium I was prepared to support a moratorium for smart meters in British Columbia, given the various concerns that I had heard from my constituents and what I heard at UBCM. Okay, I, I think we're getting into an area that, you know, because it's a municipal um, issue, you know, it's very difficult to enforce it at the um, local government level. But in returning emails to different constituents or talking to them, I communicated the fact that they should be expressing their health concerns or concerns that they have about smart meters with regard to health issues in particular to the Minister of Health as well as, as to the Utilities Commission and to BC Hydro. I also said that as an ordinary citizen, they had the right to refuse that installation. Well, BC Hydro has another view, but that's what I recommended to them. Um, as most of you know, uh, committee members to district committees are, are called for um, in the local press through advertisements asking for people to volunteer. Um, they are also um, sort of kept in reserve in the event that a district committee is set up that may perhaps, perhaps meet that uh, particular person's um, area of interest. Then um, when district staff bring um, the committee applications to a council meeting where we decide on the membership for that committee, then every council member 
as an opportunity to look through those applications and to look into the background or whatever. Um, and uh, it is a council decision as to the appointments on those committees. And I would do my part to um, make an informed decision on all those members. Thank you. Um, if I am elected mayor in the new year, I will be self-publishing a book called The Mayor in His New Clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I will do anything to get more people informed. I will do anything to get more people involved. I will do anything to get more people knowing what's going on in their town. In the first year of my term, I brought forward the idea of coffee with council. I might even have sat with some of you during those council sessions on Saturday mornings. We made ourselves available on a rotating basis in the different coffee shops every Saturday morning to hear what your concerns were, what your questions were. By the end of the second year, there was a very strong rumor going around town that Miss Tate and Mr. Bennett were now Mr. and Mrs. Tate slash Bennett. <laughs> because we were the only councillors supporting them. At a council meeting, a delegation can make a presentation. They can ask for input from council. Other members of the public can comment on that presentation made as a delegation. There were opportunities during the council meeting to provide input. I sat through the CRD tanning salon debate on behalf of this district from 1.30 until 6.30 p.m. on a day. There was lots of public input. At a committee of the whole evening, the emphasis is on discussion between the councillors and the public, and no item on a committee of the whole agenda goes without allowing for public input, and sometimes we plead for it. I have asked staff to communicate, and then I've asked them to keep communicating, and then I have asked them to communicate again. We have had open houses. The official community plan was unprecedented in the amount of public input that was requested, that was received, and that was acted on. We tweet. I think we even Facebook. We put out newsletters. We have a website. We have a telephone number. We have an incredibly friendly and helpful front desk. When I have questions that are asked of me, I give them the website. I give them the telephone number. I give them the people at the front desk to then channel that, an that request if I can't provide them with the answer. And as candidate Ray just mentioned a few moments ago, if I don't have the answer, I will find it out. The opportunity is there. The people of suit need to take advantage of them. The district of Souk is not the only local uh, government that uses um, the Committee of the Whole to be in effect at APC. Um, I would uh, hope that we would make sure it was a model that um, is best suited to our town's needs. Um, I could support exploring the concept of having an APC. Um, I've been and worked with people for just over 65 years. Um, I've had a variety of life experiences, both humbling and broadening. I've been a teacher and a school administrator for over th 36 years in my previous life, and uh, dealt with a lot of very interesting experiences and situations that were brought to me. I'm a listener. I look to work for consensus. I make decisions, I get things done. The most important thing for me as mayor would be to ensure the council respects and honors every decision that is made, whether it is a 7 nothing vote or a 4-3 vote. Thank you. Well, yeah. uh, I'm coming from Air Manor in 20 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably I be uh, envision a suit that is accessible. Um, I envision a suit that is walker-friendly. Um, I envision a suit that has connecting pale trails and pathways for people of all mobilities, whether it's walkers or cyclists or joggers or whatever. I see a vibrant community um, in the downtown area that has um, benches and, and places for people to be sitting and enjoying the day and talking to each other. Um, it's a pedestrian friendly downtown core um, where you can walk down the street for the streets and, and 
utilize a number of businesses. Um, we have a uh, neighborhood shuttle system that allows people who may not live in the downtown core area or aren't as lucky as I am to be in Air Manor. Um, they can access that bus system and come to the downtown area, um, do their shopping in local stores, support local businesses, um, and they can um, have a front row seat for some of the various uh, eco and cultural um, activities that are continuing to take place in our incredible community. And uh, I may not be able to uh, sort of honor the wild by nature spirit, but I will certainly be there. <laughs>